Um, and I, I, I remember talking to you, Walter, um, not too long ago, and, and you know, you've uprooted yourself from the west side, now over to the East Bay, um, all to chase this girl, but it was more than that. <laughs> it was more than that, Walter. I remember that you came and you wanted to establish new relationships in this church that you call yourself home, that you call home now. But more importantly, you wanted not to lose your, your relationship with God either. You actually wanted to discover your role in ministry. Mm -hmm. You wanted to know what it meant to plug into community at Sequoia, and you showed. I, I, I love the fact that now, Walter, I've seen you grow in your faith with Jesus so much so that you've become an inspiration to so many. Your involvement in ministry, your involvement with the prophetic ministry at our church, and your involvement with the worship team, uh, your friendships that you forge, people here that believe in you, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> it was about pursuing your relationship with Jesus, just as much as pursuing, if not more, pursuing your own calling, and definitely putting God first in your relationship. That's why this is important right here. You know, and I am... I'm, you guys, this is going to be a dynamic duo in ministry here. Oh, yeah. Because both of them share the same heart. They want to reach people for God. And they're built the same way. And together, I believe the Lord's going to use them for, for powerful things. Um, you guys are going to reach this, this city. You're going to reach the bay. And, and it's not too, not too much to say you're going to reach the world for Christ. Yeah. So we believe in you guys. We see your heart after Jesus. Keep going. Um, I want to tell you this. Let me conclude by giving you some marital advice, okay? And it's not like you don't know this. We're just going to confirm this in this moment among witnesses. That you will continue to put God, Christ, the center of your relationship. You will build your, your, your relationship on Christ the rock. Okay? Good days will come. Bad days will come. But if you build your, your house on the solid rock, he will be remain that foundation for you. And that's my encouragement to you guys. you say amen to that? Amen. 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 Woo, another thing is that your primary ministry is to one another. I know that you guys are wanting to jump in already. Like, we had dinner last week, and they were like, we can't wait to start ministry together, Pastor Randall. <laughs> yeah. But it's important that you realize that your primary ministry is to each other. Mm. And communication to a marriage is like fresh air to a body or oxygen to a flame. Without it, your marriage will slowly suffocate. Nations will go to war when communication breaks down. Cultures are divided when there's no clear dialogue. Jesus said his best. He said it best when he said, a house divided will not stand. Communication lines can clog quickly, and the air supply will soon disappear before you know it. So keep these lines open. If you are angry, don't sin by nursing your grudge. Don't let the sun go down with you still being angry with each other. For when you are angry, you give a secure position to the devil. Keep those lines of communication open by being quick to forgive and resolve your anger on the same day. And one more thing. Foster genuine love. The Bible says that without love, you're only making meaningless noise. I've heard a lot of marriages that make a lot of noise. But a marriage with genuine love is like a beautiful song. God's definition of genuine love is that it's patient, that it's kind. That it's not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable. It does not keep a record of wrong. It's never glad about injustice but rejoices when the truth wins out. Love never gives up. It never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Love never fails. One more thing. Look around in this room. You're not here alone. Do you see all these faces that love you so much that you don't walk this path alone? Don't be afraid to reach out to others when, you're, when together you face difficulty. Other hands are there, friends, family, the church. To accept an outreach hand is not an admission of failure, but an act of faith. Mm. So understand also that the Lord is here underneath all of this, above all of this, in all of this, to walk with you through this process. So Walter, I'm going to ask you to pledge your love to Rwanda before all these witnesses this evening. As a declaration of commitment to Rwanda before these witnesses, will you have Rwanda to be your wife, to live together as friend and lover? Will you love her and respect her as an equal, sharing joy as well as sorrow, triumph as well as defeat, and keep her beside you as long as you live? I will. Ramonda, as your declaration of commitment to, to Walter before these witnesses, will you have Walter to be your husband, to live together as a friend and lover? Will you love him 
and respect them as an equal, sharing joy as well as sorrow, triumph as well as defeat, and keep, keep him beside you as long as you live? I will. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Marriage vows. <laughs> a vow is a promise. You're about to make a covenant promise to each other. No matter what trials or storms come your way, let these vows be an anchor that reminds you of your commitment to each other. And I know that you guys both give time to write personal vows to each other, and this will be a great time for you to be able to share those. So Walter, I'm going to invite you to go first. <coughs> Thank you. Well, first, Dave, I want to tell you why I love you. Um, first, because you love the Lord with all your heart. You, up, you love others sacrificially. You know, why you, you always just give yourself for others. I love that about you. You're a really dynamic personality. So <laughs> you touch everybody everywhere we go. There's, there's always an engagement. I love that about you. Um, you're hard to have everyone meet Jesus. Um, and that you're hardworking, diligent, and responsible, and you're really a Proverbs 31 woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love the way you love and respect me. And I love laughing with you. <laughs> and doing everything together with a life lock. That's inside. <laughs> uh, and be flat out to turn me on. I'm just saying, right? Come on. I'm just saying. So I vow to you to be a kingdom husband, seeking first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and I commit to live by his word for us. Uh, to love you sacrificially, to pray with you every day, and to help you reach your full potential in Christ. Um, to always look out for your best interest and for, to protect you and care for you. And I, I vow to speak life uh, and positivity over you all the time. And I vow to have lots of fun and smile and to love you the ways that you want to be loved. That's, that's cool. Awesome. Or memorize, Walter? I did write vows, but for some reason they disappeared. And maybe that's for, I couldn't find them, so maybe it was for a reason, because I wanted to speak from my heart and just tell you that I think I know you are the most amazing man, and I waited for you. I, before meeting you, I was serving God, I was, I am still, and I was just, just very faithful in my walk with him. And there you appeared. And I didn't know how to receive it at first because I didn't know and what Pastor Randall had to, you know, spoke about. But God just told me about you and the man that he's called you to be and who you are. And I fell in love with that man, the man that every time we get in the car, you would hold my hand. Mm -hmm. Even while you're driving, you wouldn't let it go. The man that would just read to me and I just felt so safe in your arms when you would read and we would study. And I vow to you to be that kingdom wife. I vow to you to support you and to be submissive toward you and to just love you the way that you desire and you deserve to be loved. Mm -hmm. You are a kingdom man. God has called you for great things. And I want to see you walk in those things. And you support me in all of my endeavors. And I love you for that. So I didn't have to search around. He just placed you in my life. And I'm for that. I'm so grateful. And how you embrace my family. And what was most important to me is the first time we, we took the girls and I out. And then you came and you put in my door a photograph. You took a photograph of me and my kids and you, not just me and you, but my daughters. It let me know that you didn't only just see me, you seen my family. And that's really big for me. And that you love God. And that we pray, our prayer life is so good. 
And I know that this marriage is going to be great. I know that he's going to do things with us. I know we're going to have a ministry together, and I'm excited about it, babe. I am. So I vow to you to love you, to care for you, to cherish you, to never go to bed angry. When we have those discussions, Pastor Dan, <laughs> <Mom. laughs> to always remember the words put the Bible says. Okay. spiritual bond which unites two hearts and that is love. And now it's a token of your love and deep affection for each other, a desire to be united in heart and in soul and in spirit. Walter, I'm going to ask you to place this beautiful ring on the finger of your bride. And as you do, would you repeat after me? Ramonda? Ramonda? I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. And faithfulness to you. And faithfulness to you. Wanda, in the same token, you may place this ring on the finger of your groom. And you repeat after me, Walter. Walter. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my love. As a symbol of my love. And faithfulness to you. And faithfulness to you. No, no, man. Obviously, forge your relationship on Christ. And that's why this is so real and so powerful and so beautiful right now. And they wanted to, uh, in this moment, uh, take communion just to remind themselves of the power of the cross and, and, and the grace and mercy of Christ over their lives. I'm going to invite Pastor Dave, our senior pastor, to come and officiate this moment. So, <laughs> I bought that back there though too. I just walked in. Oh, okay. Okay. Gorgeous. Handsome. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the good part. We're going to receive the Lord's table. You know what it is to take this separately. You know what it is to receive His forgiveness and His salvation in your life. But there's something really unique about being able to share it as a couple. Because you know what it is for God to heal your own brokenness. There's something really powerful when you have the chance to be able to take the grace that God has afforded you and afforded you and speak life and wholeness to the person that you love so much. So you get a chance to be able to start your relationship together, speaking that kind of life. Mm -hmm. night Jesus was betrayed he took the bread. And you would hand a piece of that bread to your bread. And you receive one for yourself. Right? And he said, this is my body broken for you. So his body is broken as you hear me say every month. So we can be prepared. <clears throat> God, we thank you that you would sacrifice so much so that this moment can actually happen. That we can learn how to love each other in a way that actually breeds wholeness. That this moment isn't just about the love that we get, it's about the love that we give. And we learn that because you gave your life, your love for us. We step into wholeness into the promise of this moment because of your sacrifice. And we thank you for it. And we receive that wholeness with gratefulness in Jesus' name. So you receive that bread with you. And on the same way, on the same night, we took the cup, this is the new covenant in my blood. <coughs> You get a blood transfusion. Mm -hmm. You want to pass that to your bride. 
deceive one yourself. You know, I love how Timothy Keller says that you now have the ability to, to talk to God and see through his eyes all that you know for mom that has the capacity to be and now spend your life speaking who he says she is in her life. You can do the same thing. You, you get to access God in your personal time and say, God, all that you see for this man and then speak that over his life. And it's really because of this new covenant. Because you can speak positive thoughts all day long and you may feel good at the end of the day. But there's nothing ultimately transforming about it. Mm-hmm. But when his blood flows through our veins, mm-hmm. the God who came back from the dead and now is interceding over both of you, his new life would happen. Now when you speak those words of life and that blood's flowing through your veins, you're reminding her, you're reminding him, his blood's flowing through your veins. Mm-hmm. What you could do separately is now exponentially the ministry that you've experienced separately to move to a place that you guys have never imagined before is you have each other to speak of. God, thank you for sacrificing <coughs> Ramonda the chance to speak life over Walter and the same for Walter over Ramonda. We thank you for a covenant that you've made with us. That you hold on to us even when we don't know how to hold on to you. Mm-hmm. And I pray, God, that you would allow us to receive this with gratefulness. And we say this in Jesus' name. Everyone together said amen. 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 See that? <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Lost in space. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> exactly. Father, we thank you so much, God, for your love for this couple, God, this union that you put together, God. Uh, we cannot wait to see the fruit, God. This love that you forged, God, we cannot wait to see it grow. God, I pray that you would bless this union, God. You would bless this home. You would bless both Ramonda and Walter individually, and yes. their walks in and continue to blossom and grow. And at the same time, as they reach towards you, God, that this marriage, God, will never be shaken. Right. Yes. And continue to be anchored in you. And yes. Through you, God, all obstacles will be will be crossed with glory and dignity. And God, your strength will be made known in this relationship. I pray, God, your hand will be upon every aspect of your ministry. There will be, again, incredible reward and fruit for your hearts in serving you. And God, together in their influence, God, their influence through you, Jesus, that many lives will be touched. Right. Yes. Many lives will come to know you because I know that is your heart's cry. So I pray that you will bless this couple. Yes. Bless Walter. Yeah. Bless Ramonda. Right. Holy Spirit, yes. be their comforter, be their guide, yes. be their wisdom, be their peace, yes. be their hope, be their strength. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, here we go. Yes. <laughs> because Alter and Ramonda have desired each other in marriage and have witnessed this before God and our gathering this evening, affirming their acceptance of their responsibilities of such a union, and have pledged your love and faith to each other, sealing their vows and giving each other and receiving of rings. I do proclaim that they are husband and wife in the sight of God and man. All right. Oh yeah. Easy boy, easy. Easy, good guy.
Kawa.